Thank you. Senator Brasso. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to, to each of you. Uh, while the committee was uh, starting to hold hearings, I was actually in a radio discussion, uh, the station back in Wyoming, specifically about the, uh, the arms trade treaty. Uh, so if I could ask you, Ms. Gottmiller, specifically in your response to Senator Murphy, I think you, you uh, stated that the arms trade uh, treaty does not require uh, the, for, the formation of a national arms registry. That is correct, Senator Barrasso. It does not require the formation of a national arms registry. The, uh, you know, I, I have the treaty here, and uh, Article 5, General Implementation, so that each state party <clears throat> shall establish and maintain a national control system, including a national control list, uh, in order to implement the provisions of this treaty. So, so I, I guess I, you know, reading this to you, I ask what does it mean if it doesn't require the establishment and maintenance of a national arms registry, could, could you tell me how you interpret the, the words in the treaty? Yes, sir, absolutely. I will say as a, as a blanket matter, uh, the treaty uh, does not require us in any way to uh, change our national legislation, our national regulations or approaches. The reference in Article 5 is to the establishment of, uh, of export control lists. And we do that all the time. Uh, in fact, we are, I think, the world leaders in terms of our standards for export controls on, uh, on armaments. So uh, this treaty is an arms, just what it says, it's an arms trade treaty. It is for, uh, regulation of the trade of armaments on the international uh, market. It has nothing to do with U.S. Uh, domestic uh, policy or domestic constitutional rights. Well, I, I, perhaps then I'm confused on this, or there, there is some confusion because even in Article 2, uh, in terms of the scope, uh, and on the same page, it, is, it does talk about small arms, light weapons, uh, under undercover Section 2 uh, covered there. So Yes, sir. It does cover not only small arms and light weapons, uh, it also covers larger equipment such as tanks and, and so forth. And the focus is again on trying to get countries who have not been responsible exporters of armaments uh, to put in place more effective export control regimes. And in fact, our export control regime is, uh, we've been talking about gold standards today, it's the gold standard that was, uh, I think, uh, kind of a model for what we're thinking about when we, want, when we talk to other countries about improving their own handling of armaments exports. So it's focused on export on the international front. Uh, as you're aware, uh, Senate approval of a treaty requires two-third votes. We're talking 67 uh, votes. Last year, 51 senators. Now, some of those senators have changed. There's some new and some But last, uh, last year, a majority of senators sent a bipartisan letter to President Obama and the Secretary of State, then Secretary of State Clinton, uh, expressing grave concern about the dangers posed by this UN arms trade treaty. The treaty opens the door uh, I believe, to a U.N. gun registry on uh, law-abiding U.S. citizens. Uh, and as you know, Secretary Kerry, as we talked, signed this just yesterday. So would the administration ignore the concerns, I still believe, of a majority of the members of the United States Senate when the administration would need two-thirds of the senators uh, to approve it? Uh, so as acting under Secretary of State for Arms Control uh, and International Security, I, I would ask what your involvement has been in the decision by Secretary Kerry to sign this treaty. Sir, this was a, uh, an interagency decision uh, that was uh, fully agreed uh, by all, including, uh, including, of course, by the White House. So um, I think uh, we were all very keen to see the treaty signed, again, because it is an effort to uh, really halt the flow of armaments into civil wars in places like Africa, to really help to halt the bloodbath that has ensued from uh, poorly regulated exports in armaments. It is an arms trade treaty and has absolutely nothing to do with our own domestic arrangements. In the time I have left, I want to move to uh, Russian compliance with arms control. and. Uh, uh, in the last START treaty, I believe Russia violated verification provisions on the uh, counting of ballistic missile warheads. Uh, I believe Russia is essentially a, a serial violator of arms control treaties. Uh, they have uh, failed in the verification monitoring of uh, mobile ballistic missiles, telemetry. 
And when President Obama completed the New START Treaty, there were a number of compliance issues outstanding with the original START. So can you, can you talk about some of the violations of the verification uh, and inspection procedures which have occurred by Russia under the, the New START Treaty? Sir, uh, Russia is in compliance with the New START Treaty, and uh, as, as usual, and this goes, uh, I think, for all parties to a treaty, there may be uh, issues that arise in the course of uh, implementing a treaty. And these are considered, in this case, in the Bilateral Consultative Commission, that's the implementation body of the New START Treaty. They will be meeting again. Uh, in Geneva in October, and they will be working to resolve uh, issues that have arisen. The Russians bring up issues that they have uh, with our implementation as well. These are very complicated treaties to implement often with, uh, you know, we're basically inside the Russian nuclear uh, strategic nuclear forces bases, and, and oftentimes there are questions that arise. But we have been working very well to resolve these questions. I see nothing on the horizon that would lead me to believe we won't be able to do so uh, in the upcoming sessions of the BCC. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you indulge me to just two more questions. Along this, this same line, has, has Russia attempted to conceal any weapon system subject to verification and inspection that you know of yet under this New START Treaty? Not that I know of, sir. Oh, and, and have, has Russia attempted to deter or change inspection procedures in, in what we would think would be the way that we should be inspecting uh, these these systems under the New START Treaty? Because, as you said, these are very technical and complicated, and we may interpret things a little differently than what they may interpret them. Well, and that, again, is the purpose of the BCC, where we can get together and work out uh, any issues that we have and any questions that, that have arisen. As I said, I'm not aware of any questions that have arisen with regard to ni either issue that, that you've raised now, but if it is on the... Uh, if it is on the agenda uh, for the BCC, it will be uh, discussed there and I hope resolved. We've got a great record now. This is BCC 6 that's coming up. We've got a great record in the previous five sessions of resolving issues that have arisen on both sides of the table, and I see no reason to expect that we wouldn't be able to resolve concerns going for the, forward, whether it's in this session or in a future session, because the BCC, under the terms of the treaty, must meet twice a year at least. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'll submit other questions for, uh, for the record and for written answer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great.